Hi, everybody. This is Ashley Victoria Robinson coming to you live from the Popverse, a virtual realm created by Read Pop. And I am joined today by an incredible Canadian actress who you know from defining the role of Lois Lane across 10 seasons on Smallville, playing the lead in five seasons of Saving Hope, and is the queen of every comic book convention she attends, Erica Durantz. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here today and chat with everybody and answer questions. And uh, it's a way to reach out, right? So. Exactly. So I would be remiss if I didn't ask because Lois Lane is one of the most famous women in all of comic books and you are many, many people's favorite version of Lois Lane. What was your reaction to getting cast in a role this important? Um, you know, it was going, everything was going so quickly. I mean, of course I was very, very excited. And on some level, I think I had, oh my goodness, this is a big thing, but, um, it just, I went right into filming so quickly and it, it really blossomed into something bigger than it originally was. Mm -hmm. And so, um, definitely points when I started first working that I was like, oh my goodness, this is a big deal. Um, but really it was supposed to be a guest star. And then it just slowly kind of morphed into this other thing. So I kind of went along on the journey with it. And, uh, and then, you know, now in hindsight, looking back, I go, Oh my gosh, I did that for that many years. Right. But um, <laughs> at the time we were just, you know, you're kind of in your own little world, kind of isolated and safe. And that was back when we didn't have as much social media and uh -huh. <laughs> so I could really protect myself <laughs> and just kind of do my job. And if my bosses were happy, I was happy kind of thing. So, yeah. What did playing Lois Lane teach you about yourself since you inhabited her skin for so long? Oh gosh. Well, um, not to second guess myself, to have a sense of humor, um, to, to, to learn to be, and I don't know if one, I think one spends their whole life doing it, mm -hmm. but to learn to be okay with yourself, the warts and all, all the mistakes, all the things, you know, that make us human. And one of the things I loved about Lois is she would go out on all these adventures with Clark and, and, and fight in, in similar, you know, battles. And yet she's a human with like zero extra skills. So I, I kind of thought her to be quite tough. And I, and I loved that aspect of her. She just kind of went for what was right. And, and yeah. So you she's played, very honest. <laughs> you played a human Supergirl, and then you joined another super franchise, Supergirl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what was it like stepping back into the world of Krypton? Oh, it was such a bit of fun. You know, um, <laughs> I I ended up doing it as a favor to a friend and it kind of came out after I just had had my second son. And so I was in town and it was just kind of, it fell together quite nicely. Um, it was bizarre because a lot of the aspects of what they were doing was similar to, to Smallville, but you just, you know, you had different people. It was a different family working together. Um, and then for myself, playing a Kryptonian was fun. And yet I would have to say not to be, um, unkind or anything. There was just a, there was a, to the experience and to the character, but it was so much more fun to play Lois because she was so human and so messed up and real. And, and, uh, so playing somebody that was kind of more stoic and there was a kind of a perfectionism quality around her and her movements, although it was fun and to play somebody regal, uh, I think Lois lines up a little bit more with my personality. So. So we have New York Comic Con going up. You go to conventions all around the world, but for you, what are you a fan of? And are there any conventions that you attend just for sport? No, I would love to attend something for sport <laughs> if I have that extra time. In all your free time, of course. In all my free time. So, you know, balancing work and, and I have young boys right now. And mm -hmm. so, you know, being home is very, very important. Um, but... I have had a couple of moments at certain conventions where I had my fan moment as well. And it's just so fun. It's so fun to go and, and mix and mingle with the people that are there, the other guests, you see your friends from the past, you meet people that you really respect and you love their work. And, you know, and then of course, speaking with anybody who comes up to the table to talk to me, you know, and sharing their life. And I'm just so excited. I was part of something that is multi-generationally appealing you know mm -hmm. people are watching it and one of the themes that that um i liked is that most of the people will start with hey it was something me and my family did together it was something that brought us oh. together family parents kids whatever and it was a thing that they look forward to and so that's pretty cool to be a part of that you mentioned your sons 
do they have any thoughts or opinions on you going and just reigning across these comic cons? <laughs> they have no concept. I have an older son who gets it and he thinks it's kind of cool and fun and, you know, kind of bizarre, but he, he kind of, he laughs about it. So he has a little bit more perspective. My younger ones don't get it at all. Mm -hmm. Like, um, they just know that I'm going away and why does mommy have to work? And I'm like, well, because people work to pay rent. <laughs> You Let's know, talk about economics here, kids. <laughs> but somebody's got to do it. So, yeah. So, um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how they feel about it as they get older and they start to get a concept of what it, what it actually was that I did, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you mentioned that a lot of people tell you that watching Smallville was something that they did as a family or brought them together. What are some of the other most common things that people, like, ask you or tell you when you attend a convention? Um, well, the, you know, and I, 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 I believe they're earnest in it, but I also believe it's because I'm in front of them and they're I, generally most of the people I meet are incredibly polite, but they'll mm -hmm. talk about, oh, you're my favorite Lois Lane. And, you know, that kind of thing, which is always quite nice to hear. They like the incarnation of, of our version of her. Mm -hmm. Um, they usually ask for any kind of, were there any kind of fun little things that you guys did behind scenes? Um, but usually they share that it was just something that brought them great joy and peace in a, in a space where maybe they needed an escape. And a lot of times as, as actors, I think we think, oh, we're just talking heads. Like, what am I really doing? And what I find is quite, quite lovely, as most people will kind of go, you know, what it got me through this time or that time. This was really tough in our family. And this is, you know, I just I just needed an escape. I needed something good and light and fun. And you made me laugh so hard. And so... I like that. Bring in a little joy. So New York Comic Con, like we said, is coming up. It's right around the corner. What are you getting up to while you're there? What are you looking forward to? Where can people find you? Lay this all out for us before we pivot for conventions. Oh, okay. Well, I'm not sure where people are going to be able to find me. <laughs> we'll tell you then. The New York Comic Con <laughs> Convention Center, probably. Um, but I, I'm really looking forward to going to New York. I haven't been for so long. Mm -hmm. And whenever I go, I try to see a show or two and go for a nice dinner and that sort of thing. So um, my girlfriend and I will probably go see a show. We might go see The Kite Runner. I don't know yet. We're trying to work Ooh. that out. <laughs> uh, but it's really a chance for me, selfishly. I have a, a moment where it's like a little mommy getaway. And so I go and I work <laughs> day and then I see all my friends that I haven't seen for a long time we usually go out for dinner or, or you know a walk or something and um getting to go to a city like New York is pretty pretty awesome so Smallville outstripped Stargate SG-1 which you also appeared on in a number of episodes for longest run science fiction show Smallville had 217 Stargate had 214 and then you went on to work with Michael Shanks on Saving Hope so I was did. there ever a rivalry between the two of you about the status that you hold in, like, world of genre? <laughs> no. No, um, that's really funny. We just talked about how lucky we were to be part of a, a genre where people really, they hook into it and they'll watch it again and again and again and they're forever fans and they follow you where you go and to your different projects and it, they're, they're a fandom like no other and they, they really invest themselves in your characters, they know about your characters and then they'll decide that they like you and that's it and they follow you everywhere and it's just it's such a it's such a blessing it is so it's such a cool rare thing so we would talk about that sometimes but it was just so wonderful working with michael and just having he's a very generous actor he was you always knew he'd have your back in a scene um and just having such history we'd known each other for so long it made it very very easy to work together and trust each other to do Something that, you know, had a lot of heavy lifting at times. So it was, it was great. Yeah. I'm really grateful for that experience. You also had Daniel Gillies on the show who I know from Vampire Diaries. So oh, I kind hilarious. of feel like your grounded medical drama had all of these genre stars bringing really <laughs> real world stories. I would love to ask as an actor, um, you've come from Smallville and then you went to Saving Hope, which is a lot of techno babble, but in different ways for both yeah. of those roles. How do you handle making, whether you're breaking down science fiction or you're breaking down um, a medical diagnosis, how do you handle making that converse, excuse me, conversational, realistic, and authoritative? Um, when it's the medical stuff, uh, because it's coming from a different part of my brain, it's important that I know exactly what I'm talking about and the, 
and if I understand the procedure mm -hmm. and even sometimes the derivation of the word, where it came from, then it helps me put everything together. So we relied heavily on our, our doctors and our consultants there to walk us through things. And then if I could, if I could figure out the technical side of it, and that works with uh, technique with cameras. I was like that, that when I began to, and, and even now I have to know exactly what the shot is, what they're doing, how long they're doing it for, what they're looking for. Once I do that, then I very easily can fit myself into it. And I, mm -hmm. it. so that's part of my process. And then when it came to the sci-fi stuff, it's, it's, it's like anything else you're, you're building a character and they have to be real. And so, um, I don't get caught up too much in all of the, like if you're putting it outside yourself and saying, I'm doing the sci-fi character, she's an alien, she's this, she's that. No, 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 no. You kind of, you, you look at the material, the material will inform you what their, their goals are, their objectives are. And then really you kind of, all that other stuff goes by the wayside and it's, it's part of the mechanism that's put on top of it, I think. Well, all these layers that you've had to channel in these two very defining roles, do they help you in, every other role that you take on as a performer? Absolutely. Yeah, I, I, it's, this business is, is just like a muscle and the more you do it, the more you understand about yourself and, and the operation of it and the technical side of it. And so the more, it's like more hours that you're on the floor, you figure it out um, and you figure out so much about yourself and then just life experience. I find going out and mm. living, there, there was an actor that I just, I really, really looked up to and we were chatting on a, I was lucky enough to be part of this pilot that had Frank Langella and Joel Grey and Tippi Hedren and like, I, I just, Peter Strauss. I'm like, not to mention all the, you know, the peers that I worked with and a couple of them had mentioned, but I remember Frank said that he goes, you just got to live a little darling, you know? Aww. And, and that is so much true to, to everything, like going out and living your life. And then you come back and you end up falling into a project that really fits where you're at now. And then that somehow it makes it easier. And that's why you'll see like actors will like work for a little bit and then they'll be gone for a few years. They're living a life. They come back and they, they kind of, they fold into something that fits who they are, I think at the time as well. I mean, obviously, I, I suppose it would depend on the actor and what kind of work, maybe if you really have to do something transformative, mm -hmm. um, which I haven't really had to do. And so I just take pieces of myself that are current. But yeah. Interesting. You say that you haven't done anything like uh, super, super transformative. Is there any type of role or is there an acting challenge that you would love to take on? Do you want to um, play an alien queen? <laughs> <laughs> Well, first and foremost, I'm like, I'm pretty open to a lot of stuff that's out there. I, I have yeah. a fine balance between being pro, uh, a practical working actor and um, and then, you know, little maybe perhaps pipe dreams that you have um, mm -hmm. as a person. I think that it would be really interesting to play in a period piece. I would love that. I would love mm -hmm. to try to take on um, something where there's an accent or something that's completely different and outside and something that I'm quite uncomfortable with Ooh. and train in that and 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 develop that side of myself um i would love to do a musical where i get to sing and do all that kind of stuff uh, i would love to see you at a musical that would be out, amazing outside. it's in there but it's mm -hmm. just not something i've been able to really tap into or work on and it's something that's you know even currently in my life right now i'm taking dance lessons i'm trying to just get in my body and figure out some of those things that you know were never part of my life and so um, being able to do that in a, in a work setting would be pretty cool. I'd like that. Okay. So we've, we've kind of evoked musicals twice now, cause you were talking about going to see shows. You're going to be in New York very soon. So the Broadway geek in me wants to know, what are some of your favorite musicals? Well, Rent. Yes. yes. I did see that in New York. <laughs> uh, and I keep like over and over and over again, um, playing that. Um, I loved Wicked. I saw that a few times. Um, Dear Evan Hansen, I want to see. I've listened to the soundtrack a million times, but I haven't had a chance to see that one. And I'm just really open. I'm, I'm very easygoing and um, I'll see pretty much anything. Some Somebody goes, oh, I have tickets to something. I'm like, let's go, let's go, let's see what they're doing. Are you a big music in your trailer, music in the dressing room kind of person? Always. I almost listen to it 24 seven. It's just, it's like my, I'm walking in my own little movie soundtrack. And what will end up happening is I usually make a playlist dependent on the character I'm playing something just gels or sits. I'm reading the script and listening to different kinds of music and I switch it around. I'm like, Oh no, it's this person. And then that kind of becomes my, my thing that I listen to. Um, 
when I'm working and it's, uh, you know, most people will see me walking around a set with, uh, you know, earbuds in or whatever. And I'm usually just listening to music the whole time. Okay. So if you're a music person that I want to ask, can you tease maybe what you've been listening to preparing for something that you're working on right now or upcoming? Oh gosh. Uh, well, I don't, <laughs> I'm, you know what, I, I, you're gonna have to circle back to that one. I can't, okay. I can't okay. think of anything right now. Um, I, I guess when I was on, um, a Hallmark movie, I just finished, I was mm -hmm. doing a singer songwriter stuff. I was listening to a lot of acoustics and guitars and really like folksy kind of music for whatever reason. That's just where she was landing. <laughs> <laughs> um, when I did girl in the shed for lifetime and it was really intense and hard mm -hmm. and cold and, I ended up actually falling back on a lot of sentimental and and helpful things that I had when I was a kid and a lot of spiritual stuff and hymns and all those things. Um, so I listened to that just almost 24 seven to, to get in a different headspace. Um, yeah. Is it more challenging for you to have to do some of that uh, harder, more thriller crime based acting? Or is it harder to have to do a Hallmark movie, which is sort of on the opposite? It's very light. It's very bright. Everything's happy, which is more challenging. Mm, it's, it's, oh gosh, you know, I have to wrap my head around either thing. Mm -hmm. I would say it's much easier to kind of go into very intense, emotional, um, dark places. I'm, I, I, it's, I'm in my life. I'm actually quite happy. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I make lots of jokes and that sort of thing. So. Um, I, I find that if it's done well with the Hallmark stuff, it, it is fine. If I can find something that's very, very grounding in it, my mm -hmm. least favorite scenes in Hallmark are the, the, the Christmas scenes where everybody's just kind of ad living and supposedly just having fun. Uh -huh. <laughs> I do need a hook. I need a scene that's pretty intense or something to kind of put me into the framework of the character and then I can build around it. Um, but that's more about just stuff that I have to work on with my own sense of um, nerves and being slightly introverted because that just takes an extra version of your character to kind of like step out and, and do some of these things where you kind of have to be outside of yourself a little bit. So if I'm feeling particularly introverted, I really have to kind of give myself a talking to and go, okay, if you sign on for this thing, it's, it's go time, you know, and, and mm -hmm. switch. Um, I'm imagining the Erica Durant's prank show coming in our future where it's nothing but you having to improvise and make up lines <laughs> no, in, a, in a Christmas theme like scenario in the future. <laughs> You've dropped so much knowledge, so much incredible insight into some of your most iconic roles, conventions, acting. I would love to ask you for anyone who's watching who is an aspiring performer or maybe a future Lois Lane, what is your best advice to actors and performers? Mm. Just one, what? only one. Okay. I mean, it is a very tricky, tricky business and there's all mm -hmm. sorts of um, other things that are outside of you that can, can hamper. So it's, it's definitely not something you should necessarily make about yourself because it's just, it really is a tricky, tricky business. There's so many just um, intricacies in it, but I would say to trust yourself um, and to let go of stuff. I think if most people could just get out of their ways that in out of their way, they would find, especially if they are an artist and, and they're tapped into that side of themselves, it's just they gotta let go. And I mean, that was a big thing for me um, because it was like, you did it wrong, da, da, da. My head, my, my voice inside is so critical. But if you realize that everybody really is there to be your support mm -hmm. and not to judge you and everybody wants to make this great proje project and, and, and put it together and, and have a great time. I think that uh, you just kind of loosen up and you really do find more of yourself, but you gotta let it go. That's so, so to beautiful. <laughs> I'm waiting for your memoir. I'm waiting to the guide on life that you pen for us because you've blown my <laughs> mind so many times chatting oh. with you. Oh God, okay, well, that's nice of you. <laughs> So here in the pop verse, we like to celebrate the best in TV, movies, and comics. And I would love to know, what are you geeking out about right now that you're not working on? Oh, what shows? Well, anything. Love, okay, okay. <laughs> well, okay. I'll give you a show. I'm watching White Lotus right now, which mm -hmm. I asked for. And I'm also watching, um, oh gosh, The Wheel of Time, because I love uh, the books. Mm-hmm. So those are my, you know, kind of my, those things. And otherwise I'm, 
I'm yeah, I'm kind of geeking out with doing, I'm doing dancing lessons. I'm doing horse riding lessons. <laughs> I'm just like geeking out at that. I guess I'm that cliche lady at that age where I'm like, you know what I haven't done? And so that seems to be my, my mode I'm in right now within, within reason. I'm mm -hmm. really yes mode. Like I, if something I, scares me, I go and I do it. Why not? I feel like the universe is really prepping you to play like an incredible fantasy or historic queen, which you mentioned you wanted to play earlier. You're watching Wheel of Time. You're taking horseback riding <laughs> lessons. You're taking dance <laughs> lessons. Like I'm imagining you in the Tudor ball gown with the crown and that cutting oh gaze across God, at someone. Awesome. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. So once again, New York Comic Con is coming up October 6th to 9th. You are going to be all over there, breaking people's hearts, making people's entire experiences. Where can people follow you online and best support you so they can see where you're going to be this upcoming NYCC? Oh, I think the IG account would be great. It's Durantz.Erica uh, on Instagram. And uh, Twitter is Erica underscore Durantz. But it hasn't been verified yet. So <laughs> you know. Twitter? I know, what are you even doing? So I've got an Instagram. That's where I spend most of my time and put out most of my stuff. There we go. And I can't wait to see you at New York Comic Con. I can't wait to see everybody watching at New York Comic Con. Thank you so much for joining us here in the Pop First today. Thank you. Thank you. It was so much fun chatting with you. I have been Ashley Victoria Robinson, and you can find this interview and so much more at thepopfirst.com. We will be all over New York Comic Con, and don't forget to get yourself a membership so you can see everything that we get up to.